G'day, it's Chris Betcher here. And in this video, I'd like to explain to you how you manage apps inside the Google Admin Console at admin.google.com. So I'm gonna come in here to the Admin Console and go to the Apps module. I'll just click on that to open it up. And you'll see that there is a number of different areas in here. The two I'm really interested in right now is G Suite and what's called additional Google services. And it's an important distinction to make that anything within G Suite is what's known as a core service. And anything that's called additional is, well, an additional or non-core service. So in the uh, G Suite section here, you'll see these are all the components that are actual uh, parts of G Suite itself. And the important thing to know about that is they, they come under a completely different service level agreement. They have guaranteed uptime. They have a certain, um, these can be really tightly controlled inside the G Suite domain because they're actually part of G Suite itself. If I go back a step, and just go to that other one, additional services. In here, you'll find things that are non-core services. So these are things like Blogger and App Maker and um, YouTube and Google Earth and Google Maps and things like that. These are consumer level services that are not specifically built for education. Now, that said, there are a couple of features that you can kind of wrangle and control within a G Suite domain, but primarily these are external services. And so you don't get as much control over these as you do over the actual G Suite um, services. So let me just go into the G Suite thing here. I want to show you how you can fine tune this for your particular school. So you've probably seen the previous video I made on the organizational units. And I keep coming back to that because it's such an important concept here. Uh, while managing things inside the console. And over on here, you'll see here is my organizational structure that I've created. And you can see I've got different uh, OUs in here. And we talked about the one before for school where I've divided into staff and students. Now, one of the reasons it's important to, to divide your users into these OUs is because you need the fine control that it gives you over the way students uh, and, and users can access different services. So for example, Right now, remember the idea of inheritance, that something that's at the very top here is inherited down and every OU underneath it will inherit that property from above unless you override it. So for example, right now, if I go to the top level of this domain, you can see that certain things are turned on and certain things are turned off, like Hangouts Chat, for example, is turned off at the domain for everybody because everybody below is inheriting that. So if I want everyone to get it, I can click here and turn it on. Uh, actually, there may be overrides. I need to check. Um, but uh, let's just say, for example, year six. Let's go to year six. So in this year six uh, OU, right now, Gmail is turned on and it's inherited from above, okay? Because the group above it, which is students, is has it. And if I click on students, you see students Gmail inherited from above, which is in my school and so on all the way up. But let's say I don't want year six to have Gmail. I can simply select the OU here, go to tick that uh, next to Gmail here. And let's say I don't want them to have Gmail and I don't want them to have um, Hangouts. All right, so I can go in there to those two services. I can go up here and instead of inheriting, I can say I want them off. So two G Suite services will be turned off for all users in year six. I turn that off. And now those two groups, sorry, those two uh, those services are no longer applicable for year six. You can see it's turned off for um, Hangouts and Gmail. And I did actually have Hangout chat turned off as well for everybody. So that's how you would do that. That's another example. Let's say, um, oh, what can we do here? Um, I, I think you get the idea. So, so if I go to year seven, for example, year seven, Hangouts and Gmail is turned on, but in year six, it's turned off. So you, you actually get quite a bit of control. Now, each of these services, if I click on the actual service name itself, it'll give me the settings for that service. So for example, a good example here would be um, Hangouts, uh, Google Hangouts, which is like meet video calling. If I go into that by clicking on its name, just get rid of me, you don't need me right now. Um, these are all the settings for Hangouts. And so there's a number of different settings in here. I give you an example. If I open this up and I see all the different properties now for Meet, all the things that could be turned on. So the ability to record, for example, let's just say I want uh, probably a really good example. If I go to staff 
you can see that the ability to record is turned on and streaming is turned on. I may not want students to be able to record. So I can go in here to the student OU, go to this section and edit it. And now the ability to record can be turned off. And what I'm doing is I'm overriding. So instead of inheriting from above, which it would normally do, I override that ability to turn that off for that OU. So I've fine tuned the way uh, Hangouts or Meet is going to work for that particular group. Another good example, by the way, uh, is video calling. It's probably a good idea to not allow students to initiate video calls unless you have a good reason for it. So I can go in here right now. Students is on. If I go in here, I can say I want to turn that off and hit save. And so now it turns off the ability for students to do that and that is no longer inherited from above. Okay, so if I click on staff, you see staff can place calls. If I click on students, students can't place calls. So if I just go back to G Suite here again, so that's essentially, if you think about what we just did there, I can go to specific groups and I can turn on or off this, a service for a particular group of users, like the sixes not having Gmail. But I can equally go into an actual service by clicking on its name. And then when that service loads up, I can actually go in and change the way it operates.